Okay, so we are ready. Good evening, everybody, for this long day until 7 o'clock. And uh, maybe we can spend a few minutes here and then uh, also at the end uh, just to make the point uh, at where we are with the projects and with the groups and so on, okay? Uh, we have upda updated some information on the website uh, so that it's more consistent and more complete uh, with, what, with what we have been telling to many of you or to Facebook uh, or, or the other information. So actually, I think uh, every one of you is already in a group with a project that has been proposed and with the repository that has been created, okay? There's it's, it's difficult to always to cross-check all the names, so please, if anybody is still in, in the danger zone without the project or without the, the GitHub repository, just uh, tell me during the break uh, because we need to, to fix it uh, today. Um, today, by the way, we will also talk, uh, after we will finish the discussion about the design process, we also talk uh, more in detail about the contents of the Liberable One which was due for today, uh, we decided because uh, we are, we have a big heart uh, and uh, we decided to give you two days more, so until uh, Saturday. So you can, because we, we, we saw that actually most of the people starting to work on the repositories today or, or just a couple of groups yesterday, so you are still, uh, so if, we, if, if we close the thing by today, it will be too many uh, empty spots, okay? So we can monitor that uh, pe some people are working more than others on the project. Uh, and uh, I think you all are aware of these two repositories. One is just for experimenting and the other for the project. And right now you are using the GH pages branch to create a website, uh, but the main uh, repository will be used uh, for hosting uh, all your code, the software for, for the project, okay? So that repository will uh, become the, uh, the official one for your project. We also updated uh, in the exam section all the dates and deadlines. So actually we are here, so we extended this deadline from the 26th to the 28th. Uh, why why did, did, you, did we set this deadline? Because uh, on Monday we will discuss what you uploaded on the website. So you need to give us one day or, or slightly more to check what you what you've written. So uh, what will happen on Monday the 30th? Monday we will be in, in La Dispe, in the lab. You may work, there will be no formal assignment, no Python exercises or whatever. Uh, the idea is that you can work uh, on your project, uh, starting to refine the ideas, to refine, uh, uh, to find the technology, starting to, to think about the requirement, which is the next step, because the next step deliverable is just uh, a couple of weeks away and there's the Easter vacation in the middle. So the idea of Monday is that you can start uh, uh, working on the, on the, um, on the requirements document. We, all, we will also discuss it today, the template, what is the content that uh, we are asking you. And uh, uh, in that time, we will go group by group to give you feedback about what you've written in the deliverable one. So we will read all the website, all the vision uh, documents, uh, that all the vision information that you will have published by, by Saturday in, uh, in, in all of the different websites, uh, and uh, we will discuss with every group. So basically, every group we can work, uh, and, and if there are questions, it's okay, but basically we will give you feedback uh, directly uh, on what you write, okay? Uh, I need to repeat it again because uh, some, sometimes it's not clear to everybody. We are not uh, giving marks or scores right now, okay? 
you can do a good job, you can do a bad job, you cannot even not do it. Okay, we will not come to you and, uh, and say anything back to you. If someone, those who do something, we will have time to give them feedbacks and suggestions. Those who don't, uh, we don't care, okay? And because the actual evaluation, the score of the, of the how good or bad is it, uh, will be done only at the exam time. So if we are giving you some suggestion or whatever, you can still update it after the deadline. The deadline is just a, a point in time in which we will uh, uh, guarantee to you that we will read it and give you some feedback. Okay, it's, not, it, it, it's impossible if you modify it every day and send an email and we tell you something, it, it would be impossible to manage. So we need to have a, a little bit of a process. Okay, so the process is that on, the, on Monday, we will discuss it with you to, about what you've written on your website uh, until Saturday. Okay, then if there are some issues and critical points or, or whatever, you can still modify it. The project is, your, is yours. And what will be evaluated for the exam will be the final version. So if tomorrow or Monday will be, we will find that something is very wrong, it's not, it's not an issue, we don't care, okay? There will be no memory about that. Okay, it's just something to, to help you uh, and to avoid losing uh, the, um, the straight way. Okay, so this is what will happen in the next days. Uh, you may have seen from the, some pictures that uh, there will be some new equipment in the lab. Uh, we, this morning we had a, a donation from uh, the, this company, Bitticino company. Uh, they had, um, it's, it's bigger than it seems in this picture. It's actually something like uh, 160 wide uh, times 80 or 90 long or uh, deep. Uh, so it's in a corner in La Dispe. Uh, it's, uh, they use this sort of, uh, of stand in a, in a trade show. Okay, and, and company, they just go there and try to put their best technologies and show them in the trade show, so they put together a bit of everything. And uh, then it's, it will be too, let's say, expensive or not worth uh, um, dismantling everything uh, and reusing the components. So what they do is that they give away, let's say, basically, these uh, stands uh, to universities, research centers, uh, other, other partners or whatever. So they gave us this one, and this, there are different types of technologies. It, it's not, it's nice to see if you want, it's not ready to use, okay? Because we still need to work on some, to, on understanding what kind of components they put, what was the configuration, how to, to reprogram them because they just gave it us as it is with no documentation, actually. So it needs a, it needs a bit of reverse engineering before uh, using it. Uh, we'll try to have, I, uh, we'll try to work on that, but it's not uh, our main, uh, say, focus or urgency. If you find anything useful in this uh, stand, uh, you can think about uh, it in your project. For example, what, what we have here is that there are some uh, a couple of video cameras, there is a sensor, there's a touch screen, and then there are other, uh, there's a um, music broadcasting system, so it can, there's a radio, radio, FM radio, uh, behind it, uh, so there are some devices, this is a nice one, it's, um, uh, it's a shutter, it can go down and up, uh, just, it's a bl uh, vertical blind. Okay, with, uh, with motors, so you can, I don't know if any projects, because I don't have all the latest versions clear, if you can, if you think that your project can use some part of that, then we can work on that or discuss, uh, otherwise it's just there, will be used later or for playing. Uh, later on, when we have some more, say, hands-on experience, we can, we can also have a, uh, play, play a bit with that, okay? But it was just today. Uh, they, they promised it uh, uh, to me on, in December, so if we had it 
if we had that it by December, we could have, uh, say, integrated and uh, documented it by, 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 by the beginning of the course, but right now it's a bit uh, uh, risky. Okay, just for the latest news. Uh, finally, so we come to our design process. Uh, just to make the point, uh, we are walking through this diagram trying to see what are the decisions or the topics that we, the issues that we need to solve at each of these steps. And then we will see, we are already, already trying to see uh, what are the practical, practical steps uh, in our course uh, that are more or less related to this flow. So just to uh, remember, we uh, were at this level uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the last class and so we uh, now we, today we will finish this, uh, this part. Um, so, what we did uh, was a first part uh, that we called uh, the specification part. Specification for us is divided in two steps. Uh, the vision, that's uh, until uh, Saturday and the analysis phase uh, with a set of requirements uh, that will be by the middle of April. Then uh, we will start uh, and we will start uh, the design phase. The design phase in different steps. Uh, the idea is that uh, when you move from the left to the right column, you cannot change your mind anymore. So everything is decided more or less and needs to be implemented, or designed, or details need still to be defined, but we don't change the goal, we don't change the functionalities anymore, okay? At least we try, then every process is, of course, iterative. If, if there are reasons to come back and modify, let's do it, but let's try, uh, okay, to, we need to have very good motivations to modify something in the requirements uh, once the design phase is started, okay? Uh, if I remember the page number, yes. No, we source here. Okay, so the, the step that we already discussed last week was the architecture definition. The architecture definition is the first step of the design phase, in which we start for the list, from the list of requirements, the functional requirements and the non-functional requirements, and then decide how to implement the system. So it's the first time we ask how. How to implement the system in order to implement those requirements that just that, and in the requirement we will, uh, we were focused only on saying what the system will do. And then we started to decide, okay, what components do they have? Uh, we, uh, the architecture, we said it's a general overview system architecture, and then go into more detail, the hardware architecture, what are the computers, the processors, the nodes, uh, the servers, what's the software architecture, what are the libraries we use, the, com the software components we use, the software components that we need to develop, and so on. And uh, in some cases also some details about the network architecture, how, to, how do they communicate. And especially what kind of information every software module needs to exchange with other software, software modules. Hmm? That's the goal of the architecture definition. Um, and this is what we already discussed last time. After <coughs> the architecture has been defined, so we know what are the main computational blocks, hardware, nodes, what is the software that must run in every of these nodes, at least what, is the what are the functionalities of every software, software modules that need to run in different parts. So if we have a Raspberry, what will run? What will we run on that platform? Do we need a web server to serve some APIs? Do we need uh, uh, some database uh, with the data? Do we need uh, some uh, connection to the cloud or whatever? So we should have, uh, in some way partitioned the different requirements into different implementation 
object, hardware or software, that will take care of satisfying that part of the requirement. Hmm? In the architecture, we still have uh, blocks, diagrams, rectangles. Huh? We don't have real, in some cases, real components here. So at some point, we may have uh, in the architecture uh, a block that says, like in our example, uh, there was uh, some ambient sensors. It's a general block. And in the hardware architecture, we say, okay, these ambient sensors need to be able to measure this kind of information. Okay, we are designing in more, at every step in more detail what we actually need, what the system will be composed of. But here we still don't have the, the name and, and the part number of the sensor. At this point, we, we even don't even know whether this component will be readily available in the lab or in the market, or we will need to customize it in some way. So the next step actually has to do with the component selection. In the architecture, some components will be obvious. In the local gateway will be in 99% of the cases with the material we have in the lab will be a Raspberry Pi. That's it. It's easily selected. But we, we say, okay, but we need also a, cloud, a server in the cloud or in some external server. Okay, we need to select the provider, we need to select uh, the language, we need to select uh, the pricing, or uh, there are options to select uh, which, uh, let's say, cloud computing component uh, we want to use. Or a sensor, we need to find some study some data sheets and some products uh, uh, starting from what is already available and see whether they are suitable and fit for our purpose or if we need to look farther away. Hmm? So the idea is uh, trying to identify real actual products uh, to label the different blocks uh, of our architecture. For the hardware architecture, every block has a function, is a specific, uh, uh, must be mapped uh, or labeled with a specific uh, hardware component. For the uh, software architecture also, we'll say that if there is some library, some component, we, we, give, we give names. This is but this is mainly about the hardware components here. And uh, uh, component selection is not uh, trivial because not all components uh, are equal. So maybe you find uh, a fu you need a functionality, a sensing functionality that can be done implemented by one single sensor that everything you need, or maybe you need to combine two sensors that only measure some of the variables, and you need to combine both of them. I don't know light and temperature or whatever. You need to get information from different sources and then put them together. So it will be more complex because you have more components instead of only one, but maybe it's also easier to integrate because the libraries are already available or it's already known component uh, or it's already available in the lab instead of uh, something that we, we still don't have and it takes time, it takes work. So it's a trade-off between the cost of the components, uh, but we'll try to do this with, with zero cost, but uh, we not all will be possible, with the integration of these components, uh, do we uh, already have all the software on the documentation to use these devices? Or we need to work just to be able to, to talk to them, uh, to speak to them in order to get some data or to give some comments. If something is already available, is there the, some, somewhere a Python library for doing that? Okay, the integration effort will be low. If not, it will be more difficult. It will take more work, more in just for doing the integration, just for plugging the component into our system. And so it's something that we need to take into account. Maybe the component is much, much cooler, but it needs a lot more work. Is it worth having the extra coolness? Uh, if we know that we need to do some more implementation, it's our choice. Hmm? Functionality is the same, something, that something more or less uh, 
And so we need to select. And in this choice, uh, we may also discover then we, that we don't like or we don't want to use uh, uh, existing components. So we need uh, actually uh, to identify some needs for do-it-yourself components. So ideally, a system is integrated by putting together existing hardware components and putting a bit of a glue with software interfaces that lets them work together. Plus all the intelligence part, which is, of course, our software. But in some cases, we don't have the right hardware components. We need to build something. And so we'll try to minimize this effort, but we will need to identify very soon what, what components uh, need to be designed. Maybe with a, with a board, with an electronic board, by using some uh, lower level uh, development kit. Hmm? And it may happen that uh, while we are studying the actual components, uh, we discover that the architecture diagram that we designed and it was so nice need to be modified because uh, some choices that would be the good ones, the best, the best ones in an ideal world, well, in the real world, in the actual world, the components that we have are not feasible or not, uh, uh, or they cost too much, too much time, basically. So the idea for hardware components, uh, we need, uh, we have two different, uh, let's say, flows, depending on whether we can choose from off-the-shelf components, existing products in a catalog, and uh, we start from those. So our aim is to work as much as possible at the integration level, trying to integrate existing devices. Okay, if there is something already existing that fits our purpose, let's use it. Okay? Only if, only if uh, uh, such components are not available, or those that are available really are not suited for our project because, I don't know, they cost too much, they are too slow, they, are, they consume too much energy. There may be technical, let's say, requirement that they don't satisfy. Only then we can consider building a custom component. So the idea is just don't create your own sensor or actuator with Arduinos, for example, just, before, just because you like it, okay? Because somebody will, may love, uh, let's say, putting their hands into uh, creating custom components. But only, so not because you like it, but only because you need it. You really need it. Because creating something, something custom may be fun, okay, I agree. But then it will have a very big integration effort. Because if you do something custom, then you need to define a protocol to talk to it, uh, how to uh, say, to scale it, uh, how to develop a library for talking to the device, there will be a lot of effort just to integrate with something which is maybe, at later we will discover, will not have all the functionality you need. So, uh, creating hardware is not uh, out of scope, but it should uh, not be taken lightly, because it will be imply a lot of work. Hmm? Uh, in some cases, uh, you will need maybe to integrate some sensors uh, uh, that are not readily available, uh, and, uh, and, and, and so it will be needed in some cases, okay? And in these cases, uh, you must also identify what kind of uh, hardware, what kind of electronics, what are kind of input outputs, what kind of tran transducers you will need to build uh, your device. Uh, and also, of course, uh, these devices will need to, to communicate with the rest. So do some of, some of communication, sorry, some of computation and a lot of communication will be needed on board of these uh, new devices. And so also they will have some kind of CPU, an Arduino, a, a Raspberry, other kind of devices, we don't know. Hmm? So uh, in some cases, but try to limit it uh, to the cases in which it's really needed, it's really necessary. Uh, in both cases, off-the-shelf and custom components, uh, one general criteria 
will be as much as possible try to use components that use the same communication protocol. Uh, later in the course, uh, we will show you some middleware for smart homes, uh, so a gateway that is able to integrate and control devices working with different protocols, okay? So it's possible to have one single system with some maybe plugs which are controlling the Z-Wave protocol and some others are maybe the Bitticino um, devices uh, and they can be controlled from a single point. It's possible, feasible. Of course, it creates additional friction no? in, the, in the project, creates additional issues to be solved. So if, if possible, if you find a solution by choosing components that share all or many or most of them share the same communication protocol, it will be easier for you hmm, to put everything together. There will be less integration issues uh, when, uh, uh, so everything in Z-Wave, everything in Bluetooth, everything, if it's possible. Probably will not uh, be really possible in all the cases, uh, but uh, it's, uh, say, uh, an issue to consider, uh, to, take, uh, to take into account. Just because you can use different protocols, it doesn't need that you must huh? or that you should. Okay, it's a possibility, but it has, it has every possibility, it increases the complexity and increases uh, the effort. Uh, and of course, uh, while, while selecting components, uh, don't forget about computational nodes. So, do you need Raspberry, do you need a server, do you need a home uh, computer uh, on the local network, do you need uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, rem remember all the to to specify uh, to list. Uh, we are trying to make a list of the hardware that we need to make uh, also the list uh, the components that will be only only used to run software. So maybe uh, they are less uh, important than than maybe sensors or, or actuators. The interface with the physical world is always the most difficult. So it's, it needs a more careful selection. But then also the hardware for running software is also needed, so you, you better put it into a list and uh, trying to understand whether only one node is sufficient, more than one is needed, uh, depends on the cases. Hmm? So actually we are building a sort of a list, uh, a, bill of, or a sort of a bill of materials or what kind of components we need of the shelf and what kind of components we need to design and realize. So actually I can sh say, draw the, the, the design flow in this way. From the system architecture, first of all, we decide, we need to decide which components are of the shelf, are, car, are standard components that can be used, and wh what are the protocols that these uh, devices use. And on the other hand, uh, which ones need custom components that will be made and designed by combining some electronic board with some I.O. capability, okay, we don't want to solder microcontrollers. Huh? We start from development boards, and we put uh, some uh, firmware, some software on that, uh, and some input-output devices, some sensors, some something. Hmm? So making clear what, what we need on this side. Once we have all the information available, then the component selection phase is closed and the final, let's say, output will be this bill of materials. The list of items, of physical items that we need, we need to have in, on the table to assemble the project. Okay? Maybe some of them, or we hope most of them are already available. If some are not, uh, uh, we need to think and discuss how to, uh, how to find them. Hmm? And this uh, information will go into deliverable tree, which is uh, three weeks uh, more or less after deliverable number two. They will uh, include the system architecture, hardware and architecture, software architecture, and uh, um, network architecture, which are the three dimensions of the system architecture plus the list of components, uh, the software modules, and we need to identify which software modules are available because there's a libraries in GitHub uh, that does exactly what they want, uh, 
or the software component that we, you, need to develop in some way, and the list of hardware components uh, divided in off the shelf and uh, custom made. Hmm? So the idea is that for the beginning of May, we should have all this information clear and uh, submit it as a deliverable. At this point, uh, we have, uh, we already had from the previous step, what the system does, needs to do, and now we have how the system is organized and what are the components that need to be put together and integrated into our system. And so we can start the actual design and implementation phase. For sure, you will start to implement something even before. Uh, but it, before, the, it will, before this time, it will be mainly to, 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 to test some components, to start developing something, basically to understand the design trade-offs. Hmm? Try um, not to commit to a given technical implementation choice too soon at the beginning, until you have the complete picture of all the functionalities, of all the components of the architecture, of all the devices that we have. Because otherwise you will find that maybe some software that you already wrote that needs to be thrown away because you didn't think when you started to implement it, you still haven't thought about that, are that other requirements or that other device that needs to be integrated that works in a different way, okay? So if you, if you have to rush, try to rush on the functionality and on the architecture, not on the implementation. If you finish the functionality and the architecture sooner, you will have more time to implement. If you start to implement too soon, you have two risks. One is, uh, to do some work which is suboptimal because then you are starting to implement something which maybe is not exactly what you need. And then you will have less time and less brain to work on the other issues. So probably the architecture will be weak, the, the functional requirements will be disconnected from, from what the system will actually do. Hmm? So, uh, I know uh, everybody likes to, to, to do something practical, but uh, first let's be sure that we already agreed on what we want to achieve. One of the warnings that we will always tell you in every deliverable is probably keep it small and simple if, po if possible. Because it's very easy when you are thinking, when you're brainstorming, when you're designing to think big but then you will have to, so if you, if you think, uh, don't think big, think deep, okay? A very, something may be narrow, but very strong, very deep. It's better than something with uh, a thousand different functionalities that they will never see the light hmm? due to timing constraints or whatever. So, but in this phase, design implementation is easy to understand. You have all the information you start to write code and wire cables and uh, uh, solder boards and, uh, and uh, connect uh, sensors and actuators and so on until you have the running hardware and software. Uh, so actually realizing all the hardware and software components, if you have some do-it-yourself do hardware, implement them. So one question will always be who is going to do this task in our group. Because until now, you can work more or less together. Everyone may be at a different angle to see at things, to look at things, but they can work together because at the end you will have some documents that you all need to agree. At the implementation part, uh, it's better if you split and everyone is working on a different part. And also for the reason, it's very important to have a very good architecture in which every block of the architecture is well understood so that different persons can work on different uh, blocks of the architecture independently, but still <laughs> be aware of what the whole system will need to do. 
So that's the important part. If you do a, a good architecture before, it will be much easier to work in the implementation part because it would be easier also to split the work across different persons. Hmm? <coughs> and so basically, if you have some hardware to implement, it's one task, and all the other tasks will be of software development and uh, uh, in software integration. Software development will be split also. There will be a software that needs to run on the, maybe the mobile interface, uh, maybe an application or a website, uh, the software in the brain that do, does all the reasoning and all the intelligence, all the data handling, uh, the software that maybe runs on the, on the own gateway or close to the sensors. So there will be different modules. If you do a very, let's say, a, a more modular architecture, it would be easier also the software to develop it in different languages with different libraries, with different styles according to uh, the needs. And also it would be easier to reuse existing software. Okay, always search if there are any projects, open source projects or libraries that do part of what you need and try to reuse them instead of reinventing from zero, okay? Uh, so try to Im organize the implementation in parallel activities, hmm? parallel streams uh, that at the end will be integrated into the prototype. So this is more or less uh, a, a, a close up of the previous picture. So we had the system architecture, requirements document, and bill of, of, and bill of material. This will be our Bible in this phase. Nothing should, be, should change in these documents uh, unless it's really needed and, uh, and agreed by everybody. At this point, I'm, I'm implementing the software for the reason in part, uh, and I don't want anybody else to change the requirements while I'm in the middle of implementing this. If there is no really good reason, touching something uh, high, uh, high above here will, need, will imply redoing some of the work here at the bottom. But more or less, these are the tasks. So there will be software for sensing, software for acting, software for reasoning, software for the interaction, user interfaces. For the hardware components, if they are off the shelf, basically the task will be installation and configuration. So you see this as it's a lighter box than this. This is a double bar here. It means that there's more work inside here. If you have an off the shelf component, uh, mainly it's a matter of, of configuring and integrating it and installing. If it's a do it yourself component, you need to do a lot more work here. So, in this case, uh, try to plan your project to have less work at this level of the software. So, balance the work at the beginning. And at the end, you will have, hopefully, the working software that can run on the working hardware and connecting to the working also devices. Hmm? In this phase, we won't uh, uh, control you too much. So up to this, uh, the previous deliverable, so the end of April, beginning of May, we want to ensure that you work uh, for having clear ideas about your project. Then it will be very, not very difficult, it would be impossible to have a single process with the same deadlines for every group. Because the projects are different, they, are, they have different needs and requirements, and they have, uh, and every group has a different uh, speed in working. So from this point on, we will just uh, be there to help or to assist uh, when you need, when you need it, or, or if, if you need it. So you will see that in the calendar, in the course calendar of the, of the lecture, actually you have only, in the starting from May, you only have two types of, of classes. One are supervised uh, uh, group work, means uh, going to the LADISPE, we will be there, we can help with the question issues or problems or whatever and uh, hands-on seminars. So if there are some issues or problems or uh, algorithms or technologies or whatever that are common to more, one or more groups, uh, 
we can have one class focused on, the, on that topic. Uh, maybe bringing some expert working on that, possible if we, if, if we cannot do it. Uh, we already have in mind some topics, but we need to see better what your project really needs. In order to have some more specific focused, uh, let's say training or information on some topics that will help uh, possibly more than one group uh, to go further in their development. So this will be sort of a hands-on seminars for the groups that are interested. Huh? What we want to do, uh, I, I can tell you what happened last year. Last year, at the given, uh, around May, people didn't come to class anymore, except maybe three or four people. Because uh, there were the video lectures, and it's good, and, but mainly because they had uh, a lot of work to do with their project. So if a class wasn't, uh, say, focused or related directly to what they need for the project, they decided to skip it. No problem about that for me. But we, need, we, would, we would like to have these classes that are more useful. So we try to plan the classes on, on problems or topics that we know are an issue for some of you. So that there will not be generic, but we know that some groups will, try, will, will have direct benefit for their projects um, by those uh, sort of uh, hands-on seminars. It's a new so experiment. We, we hope we get it right this year. But the general message is uh, don't expect us uh, to be after you or to require some information or deliverables or whatever from that point on. At that point, it's just implementation work you can do. We are there to assist. Uh, we have uh, schedules also one, we call it final project review. Uh, so, in addition to the usual supervised group work, uh, this review will be uh, a moment in which every group tells us uh, more or less what is the state of their project. Oh, there's still uh, nearly three or four weeks before the exam. So, it needs not be finalized, of course. But at least uh, we, you should have very clear if uh, uh, what, what, what work is still needed and how much work is still needed to, to finish and what are the main uh, blocking points and so on. And the idea would be also to share it with the others. Okay, so it will be a moment in which we find, we, it's a project review. So everybody tells uh, how to which point they have. We already saw the deliverable. We, we don't, you don't need uh, to tell us again about the architecture because we already studied that. It was already in the, in the, in the previous step. But at that point, uh, we can give you the final directions maybe, hmm? the final indication of, of what to modify and so on. So it's something more or less the midpoint uh, in your implementation work. From the implementation to the exam, this is more or less in the middle. So there's still time to correct something, uh, but, at la uh, but you, you already have started, and so we'll already have some, you will already have something concrete to show and to, and to describe. So we, these are, will be the next steps. Hmm? Uh, there will be no, say, formal deliverable about software and hardware, except that the software will need to be committed to the GitHub project. So we will check that the software is there. And the hardware, of course, uh, <laughs> is shown during the exam. We are not checking the quality of the software. Okay, we are not scoring uh, you on how well you write the software because uh, it would be a different topic. So we assume that uh, you are writing software good enough for you, uh, for your project, okay? Uh, but we need to check that it's there and have a look at, at, at what, what you have, okay? Basically checking that it's there and it's committed. Okay, uh, don't forget about the validation phase. So once a uh, system is finished, the work is not. It's not finished at the same time in which the implementation is closed. Because we still have to check whether the users will be happy with the system. Ideally, the users already know about our system. We will have a, a group, a nice group of friends uh, that will follow us, that will be ready to read our deliverables and to criticize them and to try our beta versions and our first uh, interfaces and uh, say bad words after us uh, to help us improve and so on. But 
In any case, at the end, we need to check uh, the products in the hand of the users in general. So testing the system means deploying the prototype in some way. So up to the day before, you had development of different people working of, on parts of the system. Maybe you only had one sensor on your table, which is different from deploying five different sensors in different areas or the, of, the, of, the, of the hallway, for example. So you need to check it and every, that everything works together, there are no, no problems and so on. And uh, check whether the requirements are satisfied. So in deliverable two, you will write a, long, a very nice list of requirements. So you need to deploy the prototype and check one by one these requirements, whether they are, they are actually satisfied. Maybe not all of them, maybe during the design or, or during the implementation, you could have dropped one or more requirements. Okay, I wrote this, but it's too difficult, it's too long, I drop it, okay? But just be explicit, don't wait until the, the, the testing phase to discover that this, oh, I forgot about this. That's why we need to write them down. So all the requirements that were not explicitly dropped should be satisfied, and uh, it would be nice also to check whether users and stakeholders, if, if, if it's the case, are satisfied also. So try with users and listen to what they say. Hmm? It's too difficult, it's too slow. Huh? And uh, ideally, the test should start not after the implementation is finished, but, uh, as, but as soon as you have some parts of the system which is ready. Start testing that. And if possible, some start bringing some users, friends, to help you test that. Hmm? The sooner, the easier it will be for you hmm, to discover early those problems that might be in your ideas. Um, actually, in the testing phase, uh, we need to check two different, uh, to have, let's say, two different mindsets. And uh, in the software engineering community, they are called uh, verification versus validation of a system. So verification and validation are very similar words, but they have different meaning. Verification is checking that the product meets the design specifications. So if you have the list of the requirements, you have the picture of the architecture, you have the list of the components, the system does exactly that. Implements those requirements, is deployed according to that architecture with those components. So you check whatever the system does, that requirement 3.27 is implemented correctly. However, requirement 3.27 may be a good one or a bad one. You don't care. You are just checking the Object, the physical reality versus the document, the document, the specification, the document. Mm -hmm. The question is, am I building the system right, in the right way, according to the specification? Does it work? Does it do what is uh, specified or what is supposed to do? Uh, validation is a different concept that goes back one step and says, okay, the system is working, it's working right, but uh, the problem that this system is solving is really helping people. The system that really meets uh, the needs of the user because we design the system starting from some user requirement. Then we did a lot of work and we came up with the finally implemented solution. The solution is working correctly, but do the users see value in the solution? Maybe they saw value in the initial vision, but is this value that we say uh, used for defining our vision, is this value still in the final product or do we lose it along our long process of development? So the idea is testing the system with, the, with respect to the users and replying to the question, am I building the right system, the right one, 
the one that the people really want. I just one one example to this. All the fuss about the smart watches, no? smart watches from Google, from Samsung, from Apple now. All of them are the system building built right. They work. They do what's uh, specified. They can run up applications, they can have sensors, they can integrate with smartphones and so on. Yet, people are quite cold about these devices. They're not running to get one or two or 12. Because they, people don't see the right value. Okay, this system, what does it buy to me? Do I really need to charge my, to, to, to charge my watch twice a day? Huh? Or something like that? So it's something that works as specified, but what it does, what the system does, is not useful. So it's not uh, this is the, the idea of validation. Validation, of course, uh, can start very soon. You don't need to have the system complete, finished, and ready to understand whether its functionality is fit for the user. Verification needs to be done on a real working system, of course, uh, on the other way. So. It's something that comes later. It's more technical. Huh? But this is the, the risk of the engineers or the technical people. Building very nice systems that are not liked by their users. So that's why I always say that the, the system, the prototype, uh, should be tested by the users, not by the developers. I never saw, of course, you as a developer, you need to test your code to debug, but it's not final testing. Final testing should be done with users, with external users. You as a developer are the latest person in the world that can find problems in your system because you know it too well and you love it too much. Okay, so this is a, would be a very nice uh, model. First, the architecture then the components, then implementation, and testing every, everything is green light at the end. But, uh, of course, when we go into more and more and more detail, we will find some problems, some issues, some questions that we didn't anticipate, we didn't see before. And so we will need to go back, okay? Uh, this model, was called uh, generally the waterfall model. Huh? Waterfall like the Niagara Falls or other type of waterfall. F water flow flows from top to bottom and never comes back. Uh, actually, mm, software development cannot be totally waterfall. Uh, we, you need to go back in some ways. There are different uh, methodologies for developing software which some are more or less, uh, let's say, um, they try to focus more or less on this going back uh, uh, very often. Uh, on, on one extreme, on the opposite extreme from the waterfall model are so-called so agile methodologies. Let's say start implementing something and every day, so every evening, you should go home with the system with, that, that is working that is doing fun something. And then tomorrow you will add some functionality. But you will always have from day one a system that is working and does something. And so if the system is already online, maybe it only does one or two little things at the beginning, but they already can be tested. And from the result of the test of the very few things, uh, you can maybe learn uh, the output of, of the validation. You can learn what the users are liking more. And so they will guide you to the development uh, of the next uh, uh, features. So the idea here, here is that you, you build uh, the list of features of the system while you are developing it because you have a parallel team of testers and users that will give you feedback. This is in many cases, uh, and the normal way for web applications or for big web services, that start small with uh, some functionality, start attracting some users, and then according to the user feedback, they will add different features that they will evolve. 
of course you need a, to have a very strong management uh, and not just to implement everything that every user told you once huh? because otherwise it will become a mess and you will lose your identity as a product between the totally agile methodologies and the totally waterfall methodologies there's a word inside hmm? so you should organize your work uh, just take into account uh, at least these two principles you can always go back but you need to be to be aware that you are going back because it may change something and the changes may have other consequences uh, and uh, always test okay uh, so actually the waterfall is more like like the Escher waterfall uh, you know I think you know this picture and water is always flowing down, 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 and then it has a jump down, and then it's here at the beginning, and it's still flowing down. Okay, so it's, uh, it's always, of course, it's, it's impossible, no? this, uh, this situation, but uh, it's a waterfall in which sometimes you, you find yourself at the starting point again. Huh? So you need to start again from the beginning and, uh, and redo, the, uh, redo the same street all, all over again. Okay, so this uh, was about uh, oh, so the general methodology. Uh, in this course, we already decided that uh, we cannot implement all these steps. Uh, we already took some shortcuts. Uh, basically, we have no time for proper user testing. So doing some user focus group at the beginning, some testing session in the middle. We don't have uh, so many test users. We don't have so much time. And so we will fake it in some way. So try some friends and try to get some feedback. That was the message I, I sent you, okay? Uh, we cannot do it in the proper way, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It's for, for your project. Hmm? Uh, because also because we need to concentrate more resources on development and testing. Component selection will also be constrained by available devices. Um, if you discover that it will be, oh, that you need a really nice sensor or actuator for doing what you need, and it only costs uh, 20 euros, be aware that it takes more or less six months for the Polytechnic to buy it, huh? because all the bureaucracy and all the constraints from the, from the ministries and so on. And so it will be very difficult to have, uh, to integrate new components that are not already available in the lab, uh, apart from the, the doors that have already been ordered and will arrive in the next uh, weeks. Uh, unless we you find somebody who can, or maybe we can find some sponsor, somebody that, uh, that will buy them or lend them to us or whatever. So, uh, but we, what I want to say here is that the selection of the components will not only be a technical problem, but also an availability problem. We need to take into account, but this, we, we can work together on this. Okay, so this was the idea, that the picture that we I already shown you. Uh, what remains more or less uh, out of the steps that we are asking you to do are this requirement elicitation, which is the formal process for getting user feedback on the initial requirements. We are not doing this. And the actual test and validation. We hope uh, we can do something with the help of friends what we are not a group, uh, a set of testers. It, just be aware, in the Agile methodology, usually they have uh, an equal number of, te of testers as they have of developers. So if you have three people developing a system, you have three people just testing it, which are not, not, not necessarily programmers, but need to test every functionality every time. So more or less it's a 50-50 effort. We will not have so much effort to devote to test and validation. It's important, but we need to take shortcuts somewhere, and we, we cut it short, the, the validation and the elicitation part, mm -hmm. just to get, to get a, a nice uh, prototype to show. It's not a product, uh, so we can accept that it maybe is not uh, validated uh, properly or thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is uh, the, the process, but we already, we already know it. Uh, um, just to be aware at the exam, let's go back to the final point. So during the, 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 the different months in, in April and May, you will have these three deliverables, which are more formalized. 
Then after that, there will be, there will, there will only be the, the exam time. And the exam time will be uh, evaluated through the contents of the website and through your presentation. So the, web, the website will contain all information concerning the, the three deliverables. So it will be nicely presented, but it's the same information. So you are building the website as you go. It's not something that you need to do at the, at, at the end. Uh, well, information for D1 will be in the website. Information for T2 will be pr probably another page or a group of pages in the same website. So uh, each the set of the deliverables and the website are the same. The only thing that we are, that we are, we are asking in addition to this are some presentation videos to put on the website. Uh, every project should have their own video to just two or three minutes. There are some instructions online, just read them. And uh, for the exam, mm -hmm. it, we will not review it soon. If you want to, to show it, and we will look at them, but there, are, there will be no formal review for the video. You can do it in any, in any, any time. Of course, you cannot do it too soon because you still don't know what the system will, da will do. And then the presentation and demo, which is just what will happen in the day. Um, OK. We already said many times that uh, the deliverable for deliverables will provide uh, some templates to start with. They are not formal, or formally, you should not call them templates, because you are not submitting a document according to that template. You are populating your website with the information that we ask. But we found useful to give some examples of documents just to not, not to forget no, some items. So what uh, I prepared, and we can work on it, are some examples, or for example, uh, we, starting from a template of, of what is needed uh, for instance, in the deliverable one. Uh, so this document, I will upload it uh, as soon as uh, the, the Wi-Fi works today. And it seems to come and go. Um, I prepared this document for the liberal one. There is another for the liberal two and so on that we that we'll see together together. Just to have uh, the list uh, of uh, information that needs to be there, that needs to be on the website. <laughs> so uh, don't you, you can work on this file, in this file, and then cut and paste in the website. Or have a page of the website exactly with the structure. Or uh, put the information in different places of the website. The organization of the website is up to you. Okay, we will only, we will only check the content of what you write and check that everything is, is there, is available somewhere. So what I wrote here is uh, the contents of this document must be published on the, pro on the project website in a, in a clearly identified location. Okay, I remember last year that were one group uh, that uh, had some way hidden the requirements document uh, under a link because there was a link in a dark gray on a black background uh, in the middle of two pictures. So we didn't see it uh, until the last minute. And then, so, oh, but this really, what was that? It's a, uh, and uh, so we, we click and we found a, a document that we w was looking nice, actually. But it was not clearly identifiable, let's say. So, uh, but w what counts actually is the, the type of information. So the name of the project, the acronym of the project, and the, of, of course they will be published in these uh, URLs. Uh, you know that this, no, it's not a good one. This is the, the the URL of the project, but the, the URL of the public site uh, website is different. Hmm? I will open the window during the break so that we can see. You need to list the group members somewhere in the website, also to have uh, your 
ownership, to claim the, owner, the ownership uh, uh, on, the, on the project. Uh, most of the information is nothing new, okay? It's just a sort of a checklist that everything should be ready by Saturday. And then the main part of the deliverable ones of this phase would be to have a vision of the document. Here is nothing new. I just copy and pasted from the slides when we described about the vision. But at least you have them, you know, uh, everything on, on one page. So the brief summary of what the system does for the users, define the target environment, defining the, so where it's supposed to run, define the users, define the stakeholders. Be assertive, not possibilistic. Uh, don't write, it may be for these users or for these other, for students or maybe for teachers or maybe for others. Hmm? Select one domain and be specific to that. It can be installed uh, inside the classroom or outside. No. What you do inside is different from what you do outside. So if the system starts without a clear identification of the environment, of the location, it will be very difficult to find, to discuss about the functionality. Okay? So the environment, the users, maybe the stakeholders, try to be assertive. It needs to be, it's your choice, okay? There is no better choice than another. You, you choose a system to work on this domain, or work on this problem, okay? We are not, uh, and we never commented on the value or the quality of a project. Uh, if you need, if you observe in this, in this month, we try to filter the project according to the MEI requirements. As long as it's an ambient intelligence system, it's okay. And it applies to the campus, of course, to the theme of the year, do whatever you want. It may be a, a problem which is more important than another, maybe just a detailed problem, there's something that nobody cares about, it's the same, it has the same value for us, okay? For us, the process of developing it, not the marketing value or, whatever, or the social value or whatever of the project, okay? But you need to be explicit, try to narrow the choice, otherwise you will have problems in the future, because we will never be able to say what is in and what is out. Hmm? Is this needed or not? What are my users doing? What is the daily flow, the daily life, the daily routine of my users, if I don't know the user? If the user may be A or B or C or different. Hmm? So maybe you have two groups, of course, but identify them clearly. Don't be possibilistic. Hmm? Um, how the environment supports the users, we already know. What problems need to be solved? So, what are the problems that today are real problems for the users and tomorrow will not be thanks to your project? Benefit for the users or for the environment. Avoid describing technology, but we already went through this, okay? Imagine selling it to an, uh, an engineer. Maximum one page plus pictures. It's nice to have some pictures, some ideas, some just to communicate. Okay, so it's uh, what you are uh, what you already are doing. Starting from the short project description that we already discussed last week, uh, say explain it better in a one page plus pictures with this. Uh, uh, of course, this is just uh, random text here. It doesn't mean anything. Do you know Lorem Ipsum? Anybody ever met Lorem Ipsum? What is that? It's a poem? No, it's random. It's a random text, uh, Latin looking. Uh, it looks like Latin, but it's not actually Latin. Uh, but it's a filler, a nice filler, because if you want to show a paragraph of text here and there, instead of write ASDF, ASDF, uh, just with the keyboard, you have some text that looks uh, formatted, and it doesn't have any meaning. So what, uh, it doesn't influence the perception of the user. It's good for testing interfaces. Because it looks like text, but it doesn't uh, push any 
meaning on the user except what happens by by the layout what is communicated by the layout by the text by the length by the size and so on mm -hmm. so you find a lot of uh, places where people go cut and paste some lorem ipsum and then we'll fill we'll be filled with some real content later That's a website that can generate you pages and pages of like that. Okay, after that, the vision. Uh, I think it's useful to write down what you already discussed. So, what are the four main dimensions, the steps, the MEI steps, we call them in the slides, that your project is covering? What is the sensing? What is the reasoning or intelligence? What is the acting part? And what is the interacting part of your system? Just one line or two lines per each. Sensing will be this, this, and that. Acting will, will change. I will give notification. will change the lights. I will uh, play a siren or whatever. Huh? Just uh, it's a check for ourselves for everyone, for every group. Just, okay, did I forget anything? The main parts are all, are all there, are all the main parts there? And the same, so this is the, you should be able to write something meaningful in every of these four lines and something that is convincing for you in the first place. Okay, so this is the main filter. And uh, maybe the difference between the green project and the yellow ones in our previous evaluation was mainly on how clear these four items were taken, well, how clearly these four items were taken into account. So try to do this sort of self-evaluation self in these two days and try to write what you think, what you imagine, what's your perception of these four dimensions for the project you are proposing. If something uh, is not uh, perfect, we can discuss it uh, on Monday. But do write something. Hmm? We will not accept, uh, I don't know, as a reply here. Okay? We are not providing the answer to you. You are proposing, and we may say, okay, but try to think in the, in the more in this direction or more in that direction, okay? And then there's a more detailed MEI features, you know, the six uh, blocks, uh, uh, sensitive, responsive, adaptive, transparent, ubiquitous, and intelligence. Uh, and also it's a question for ourselves, our project, what does it do in this area, in this respect? Is it sensitive? How? Why can you call it sensitive? Is it responsive? How? Why can you call it responsive? And so on. Uh, this is different from the previous one. It's more on the quality of the system, not, not just on the structure. And we don't need to fill all of them. Some systems will be more, will be more developed and maybe transparency and responsiveness, some other will be more ubiquitous and intelligent, and it's normal, okay? Not all, pro, not all projects are alike. So maybe some of these voices say, okay, it's not at all. You reply, it's not. It's not adaptive. Hmm? Maybe. Uh, but for some of these, of course, you will have some strength of your project. It's basically identifying uh, the strength of the project. How can you sell it more hmm? or better? Or what are, what are the strong points that make it different from the others? Of course, it cannot be all empty. It will not be all empty because otherwise <laughs> you will already have found problems before. But try to ask you, just for, since most of you already have written the vision, try to read the vision and ask, ask to yourself and try to answer to this question. Five more minutes for this uh, last point, open issues. Um, the idea is uh, 
this is something new, but it's not, uh, no, it's not an ad additional work, okay? Or not too much. Um, the idea is uh, you are starting to think about uh, your project. Maybe you s you're already seeing uh, some needs. Uh, you need to, I don't know, um, several projects talked about, uh, ah, the system will adapt uh, to the student schedule. The classes. Yeah, okay, right. How do you get the information? I don't know the answer right now, okay. But uh, it's an issue. We need uh, to find a way to get the information. Maybe just talking to one person that manages the system can get and can give us some address from which we can export it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I want to work on the trash bins. Uh, who is the person that was already working with the trash bins in some company? Can I get a contact? Can I discuss? Hmm? So, the main, not, not on details, not on the libraries or the languages or the tools, uh, but mainly the, the, what you see as the blocking issues. Is there anything big that you would like to have some help or some discussion with somebody else that maybe has the information. Uh, getting some information, having some devices to test some in some in interfacing with something. If you have something, if you are seeing in your project this, something that oh, I really don't know how to get this information, just write it here. Instead of writing emails, or, or you can also write emails or tell us, uh, but we tend to forget. No? It's a risky. Uh, write in the, have a section on the website, open issues, in which you, li you list this. So that we can review them and say, okay, but you, for this issue, which is worrying you, you can contact this person. And we can match, you can arrange for, for meeting them. Hmm? So the main problems that you expect uh, that your project will be facing. What is non-trivial in your work? It's not developing, okay. Okay, the development is normal, designing is normal. But what you need uh, in learn, what kind of help you need in learning what you need to learn? Hmm? Uh, some kind of contact to companies or researchers or some polytechnic or service to develop your project. Hmm? Try, you already maybe are thinking about this. Uh, uh, something that, okay, you, you, in, your, in the back of your mind, of your mind says, uh, we will sort it out. Okay, if sorting this out is not just a technical issue that you need to study more or to find solutions, but it also implies talking to somebody or interacting with something that is already there, tell us so that we can help you to get in contact. And uh, another point is uh, if you want to start thinking about how you will show and demonstrate your project. Will it be feasible to demonstrate it on a table in Ladispe? Okay, so we know we have it. We have these tables, we have the lab. But if not, if your system will need some more complex de deployment, okay, can be arranged, of course, we need to know it, start uh, and to start thinking about it before. Okay, you need special location, you need more space, you need some special devices. And uh, try to imagine, write down, and say, so we can find some solution or some compromise uh, specific for your project. This, uh, imagine this uh, not as something that you need to fix down or to write a complete list by Saturday. It's a live section of your website. As, long as, as soon as you maybe uh, solve some issues, you will find others and just keep track of the open issues. At the end of the project, probably, this will be all solved, we hope. Or maybe some will st be still open because we decide that the project needs to be changed because some issue could not be solved. So we document that, okay, we could do, we could do better if we solve these issues, but we couldn't. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, acceptable, it's a, a normal change management of the project. So the idea is the goal is to keep track of the main problem that needs to be discussed and solved you should organize a section on the website with a work in progress of this information. So it will never be final. 
in the deliverable two, we, you will also, uh, we will always, all, sorry, we will also ask you to update the open issues. So update them constantly. Work in progress of this information that will change throughout the project life cycle. Okay, so this is the information that uh, you need to, to fill. Later we we'll start uh, having a look at deliverable number two. So after, say, Saturday, you can start working on that. So we, we sheet together a, a template of deliverable number two and also some examples to fill that. But now we are all due a good break.